Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, and uh, trust that you've had a blessed weekend. Let's pray and then we uh, begin today's session. Let me just start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your word in our lives. And Father, thank you for the book of Acts, Lord. Thank you for this pattern, this example that you've left behind, uh, behind for us, that, Lord, we can see uh, the work of the Spirit through your people, O oh God. And Father, even as we study, uh, Lord, uh, the impact on various cities, we pray that you will equip us, Lord, to impact our cities and uh, Lord, to see a, a great revival, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you once again for this incredible opportunity. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been looking at Apostle Paul on his second missionary journey, going to different cities. And um, each city has its own, its own setup and its own uh, culture uh, and uh, a certain kind of people. But thank God in, in each city where they have gone to make a difference, they are able to. And they are uh, preaching the gospel. Last week we saw how in Acts uh, 17, they go to Thessalonica, they get into trouble. They were meeting in the house of a person called as Jason. He is dragged uh, because of them. And uh, he had to pay a fine to actually be let go. And the next thing that we see is their visit to the place called uh, Beria or Beria. And in this place, they uh, uh, Paul preaches. And what was the special special attitude of the people of Beria? What was different about the people of Beria? Yes, yes, correct. So they were very careful about accepting whatever was taught. They made sure that it was accurate and uh, that's how they believed. So we said that through that we can learn how to search the scriptures, verse 11, Acts 17, verse 11, where it says, search, they search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So we too need that heart to search the scriptures. Then as Paul preached, there was a good work which was done in Beria uh, and, uh, you know, things went on well. But again, Similar to other cities, they had opposition. Philippi, they had opposition. Thessalonica, they had opposition. Uh, Beria, they had opposition. So now they are being sent by the brethren to a safer place, so to speak. So the next stop is, what is the next stop? Sorry? Yes, yes. Uh, Athens. And uh, Athens is the present day capital of Greece. Uh, but we also talked about how it was a intellectual center back in those days also. People would go there to study. And we shared about, uh, you know, some of the famous scientists, philosophers, Plato, Aristotle, who were all, um, uh, you know, in, in this place, equipping themselves and doing their work. So now let's look at what kind of ministry Paul was able to do in the city of Athens. Uh, let's go to Acts 17 here. Start with verse 16. So could someone read out verse 16? Yeah, verse 16, please. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Mm, okay. So it states there, what happened to him? Provoked. Provoked within him because the city was given to idols. So here is the, um, you could say, picture of Athens that they had many gods. They had many philosophies, uh, many beliefs, and many gods. And uh, one of the 
writers um, of those days, he actually said that in Athens you would you would find more idols as compared to men. So they had those many idols. When Paul went to that place, obviously he was provoked in his spirit. Why? Why is he? Why, if there are idols, why is he provoked? Yes. So um, we could say that among all the all the um, faiths that they have or the beliefs that they have, he must have thought that nobody has proclaimed about Jesus. So you know, there's no place where he could see uh, the message of Christ in that city. So there can be many reasons why he was provoked. That how come you know? The gospel hasn't reached here. People have not heard the gospel. And then he witnesses this particular city with idols. So then he's provoked in the spirit. Provoked in the spirit. Now, uh, you remember when we talk about the prophetic, we say that we hear from the Lord. We receive from the Lord. Even based on what our spirit senses. So, Later on, we will see that Paul is bound in the spirit. Here, provoked within him, in the spirit. So where is this provocation happening? In the spirit. Okay, so this is one of the things that we have to keep in mind in our walk with the Lord. What is it that we are sensing in our spirit man? We could say that there are lots of difficulties around us, but we can still experience peace in the spirit where we know that God is with us, you know, God is leading us, uh, his help is there for us. So in the spirit, the things that are happening in the spirit, here Paul is being provoked in the spirit. Don't know how, uh, you know, the other things were in the city. Maybe it was, it was wonderful because it was such an ancient city. Uh, but within his spirit, he was provoked. Now, the other question that we want to ask is, when we go to cities, we travel around the world, we generally look at the technological advances, we generally look at the progress that has been made, and usually we'll go to some sites uh, where people go, you know, common tourist sites, and we enjoy the city. But have we ever felt the burden of the spiritual condition of that city. Right? It's interesting, right? Paul could have gone there. It's a it's an it's a really nice city. Everyone would have wanted to go to Athens. He could have thought, okay, before Timothy, you remember uh, sorry, Silas and Timothy to come to him, which means that he he was not with them. He has to still wait for them to come. So he could have just been a tourist looked around, enjoyed the city. However, apart from knowing what the city is all about, he's, he's got the spiritual concern for the city. So that's a pointer to all of us, whether we think about the spiritual condition of cities when we go there, uh, can we feel or sense in our spirit what is happening? You know, the city needs the Lord, the city needs the proclamation of the gospel, so on and so forth. So the burden for the city Paul had, his team had, and uh, that is an inspiration for us. Now let's go on. Now that he is provoked in the city, what does he do? Verse 17, um, Nikhil, could you read verse 17? Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentiles worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who happen to be there. So, because he is provoked in the spirit, there is uh, a concern that he is carrying. He chooses to do something about that concern. So, he starts to reason or talk to people. Is there any other place that he reasoned? He proclaimed the gospel, but is there any other place where he explained to the people and clarified regarding Jesus? Many, 
both in the synagogue and a marketplace? Uh, okay. No, no, uh, where yes, are we You said something? Mm -hmm. uh, Nina, if you could please... Both in the synagogue and marketplace? Both in the... Are you able to... Are you synagogue and the marketplace? Are you able to hear me? I mean... Uh, yes, now, now we can hear you. Was the question where? Okay. Where, the question was uh, where, out, is it? Uh, the question is where? Outside of Athens. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Yeah, so I'm saying there's another place where he explained. You know, there's one thing to proclaim, and then, then a, there is another thing to explain, to reason, to convince. So in one of the places, the scriptures say that he explained. So which city was that? Okay, let's let's not spend too much time on it. It's Thessalonica. If you just go up a few steps in the last class, I told you he explained and demonstrated. So he takes the effort, or rather, he makes the effort to reason when people have questions clarify and help them to come to faith in jesus and as nina shared that's accurate he uh, as far as athens is concerned there are two places where he ministered synagogue which is the common place where they always go and it says the marketplace the marketplace is called as the agora so it's called as the Agora, uh, where dis discussions were held, where philosophies were shared. So he made sure that he went where the people were. So it was these two places in Athens. And um, in this, when, when he went to um, you know, these places and he started sharing, verse 18 says, there were certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. So Epicurean and Stoic refers to certain, uh, uh, you know, lines of thought. What they believed about life. Philosophy is, you know, about uh, life and how it came to be and some, some of those uh, ideologies behind it. So what is the Epicurean thought? The Epicurean thought said that um, ev everything happens by chance. Okay, And they also believe that life is for pleasure. The chief goal of life is pleasure. So man could live any which way as long as he's enjoying his life. That was their philosophy. And they could... You know, they were propagating that and uh, uh, they, they were, uh, yeah, they also, one more, one more thought that they had is that God and the world are separate. Like there is no connection to gods and the world. So that's the reason for man, it was all about live your life to the fullest and enjoy your life. You know, that's it. But whereas the Stoics, they had a slightly different philosophy. They believed that everything was God and that God was a fiery spirit. Okay, something different. So don't, don't worry too much if you don't grasp the, uh, the philosophy in detail. But they believed everything is God. Every, you know, everything, every creature is God. And when it comes to the creatures, uh, they believe that God is like a fiery spirit. The fire comes and imparts life to people and uh, they come alive. They live their life and when they die, they return back to this fiery spirit or this God that they believed in. And, you know, once again, once again, the life would be given and they would come back alive. So then this keeps happening. Okay. So there is 
all these new kinds of thinking about life that were going on so when these philosophers epicurean and stoic philosophers heard paul sharing they said what is this babbler wanting to say why babbler maybe because uh, you see uh, like there's one scripture uh, which says like knowledge puffeth up okay so which means that with a lot of learning comes what pride so maybe just see uh, it's not bad knowledge is from the lord uh, the holy spirit is called as the spirit of uh, you know knowledge understanding so knowledge is not bad but knowledge outside of um, you know the right heart attitude humility what can happen we can become very proud so maybe these philosophers felt that we are so intellectual you know we've written so many books and we've participated in so many discussions arguments and we are learned so who is this guy why is he talking about god and philosophy like what is your background so they they looked at paul like that and that's why they're saying babbler babbler is what babbler is you know somebody is just babbling yeah uh, so uh, they are they are looking down on paul others look at him and they say oh he seems to be proclaim proclaiming a foreign god or foreign gods because he was preaching about jesus and resurrection now the people in athens these so called intellectuals had probably never heard about jesus that's why for them it's foreign hey who is this who is this new god that you're talking about foreign god so because he had something new to share they took him and they brought him to a place called as areopagus so let me quickly see if i can um show you the image of areopagus it's also called as mars hill where paul went and he had the opportunity to share about christ yes just oh. okay i hope that you can see it now yeah so there you go this is what uh, mars hill looks like Mars Hill where apostle Paul delivered the Areopagus sermon so it seems like a spot um you know like in other other places we talk about amphitheaters and uh, places where people gather for their meetings their talks for the Athenians discussions were very important so they had a special spot the areopagus mars hill so they invited him and said okay since you're talking about a new philosophy we are so interested please come paul we will give you um you know a couple of minutes and uh, you can then share tell us more about this god that you serve tell us more about uh, this new god that you are proclaiming so thank god you know he got an opportunity to go there and speak uh, from his heart so in the sermon that he makes uh you know paul goes ahead and uh, he proclaims christ maybe we'll just quickly read through his sermon and then i will uh, highlight the key points 
yeah will you read prince uh okay we can read from verse 22 itself it's fairly long uh, till 31 reading from verse 22 then paul stood in the midst of areopagus and said men of athens i perceive that in all things you are very religious for as i was passing through and considering the objects of your worship i even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown god therefore the one whom you worship without knowing him i proclaim to you god who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of heavens and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he indeed anything. Since he gives to all life, breath and all things, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed pre times, and the boundaries of their dwelling so that so that they could seek the lord in the hope that they might grow for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us for in him we live and move and have our beings so as also some of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring therefore since we are the offspring of god we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's hand. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everything to repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this all of this to all by raising him from the dead okay thank you thanks prince uh, that was quite long but thanks for reading it so i want us to notice uh, how he is speaking in context if we go back to the sermons by peter earlier peter talked about moses talked about david you know talked about um, what the scripture says in Psalms. But the sermon here that Paul is making, you don't find any references to the Jewish scriptures. Why? Correct. He is bringing out the meaning. He's talking about God. All of that is happening for sure. But contextual. Because the people may not understand. So he's taking them, you know, sometimes they say that you take, when whenever we teach, we take people from the known to the unknown. So from whatever they already know, we begin there and then we share more light to take them to a place to understand something new. So that's how he's taking the approach. So he says, and look, he's not condemning them. He's saying that... Uh, uh, I see that all of you are very religious, which is a good thing. So looking at the devotion, so many gods in that place, he's not putting them down, but he's recognizing that these people have a devotion for God and they are seeking God. They love, they want to know God. So he appreciates them and says, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. And he says, as I was passing through and looking at your objects of worship, I found an altar which says to the unknown God. They had an altar for the unknown God. And see how Paul is making the connect. He says, therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. So he takes that up and he says, that unknown God, let me tell you about that unknown God. So that way, they got the interest. Because he's not condemning them. Imagine if he would have started and said, oh, you are worshipping other gods, you are worshipping idols, this, that. Uh, uh, God doesn't like you. There is no condemnation. 
in the way he's approaching them, but very genuinely, sincerely, from whatever they know, their understanding of the unknown God, he says, let me proclaim that God to you. And then he paints the picture of that God as a creator, how God has created, how God he, uh, he has breathed life, how he has made people of every nation, given them their boundaries. And, uh, you know, he, he goes on, he says that we are the children of God. And see, Paul was a learned man. So we notice him referring to their context again. So in one spot, he says, as one of your poets have said. So that shows us he may have read, you know, Athenian literature, smart person, Paul, but context. And now, you know, he says, uh, uh, you know, we are the children of God and, you know, uh, the nature of God, it's not silver or gold. He's trying to help them understand that God is spirit. His life is different. Okay. It, the nature of God is very different. We cannot, we cannot uh, make the nature of God. So he says it's not shaped by art and man's devising. So he's preaching the gospel in a way that they can understand. And then, of course, he goes on. You know, he begins to start, start talking about Jesus. He says, till now God ignored all these things, but there's coming judgment through whom? Through Jesus Christ. And then when he comes to this portion where he says that God raised him from the dead, that's the point that they don't like. Okay. So it went okay till now. Everything people heard. The moment he said resurrection of the dead, they didn't like it. So at that point, they asked, they mocked him. They said, uh, you know, this is not good. We don't want to listen to you anymore. We don't want to talk about resurrection of the dead. Can you please stop what you are speaking? So his opportunity was gone at that point. And then they said, okay, we'll listen to you, you know, some other time. And uh, that was it. There was not, you know, like we, we don't read. Luke does not write anything more about the ministry in Athens. Now, for us, I think I said this in the last class, the gospel is for everyone, for the so-called learned, and maybe not even that much learned. What was the uh, work or job of Peter? Fisherman. And uh, uh, what about Paul? Like, a tent maker. Uh, but before he became a tent maker, he was in the council, right? He was uh, in the Sanhedrin. So very established. But both are in Christ. So anyone, anyone who believes is part of the kingdom of God. So in Athens, though there were intellectual people, Paul never got scared. Sometimes we get scared. We think, how will they listen? You know, uh, other people, simple-hearted people will listen. How will these learned people listen to God? Doesn't matter. Even Paul preached. They listened. Because what we are preaching is spiritual in nature. And everybody has, you know, that spiritual need for Christ. So we should not be afraid when we are preaching, whether to so-called learned people or, you know, those who uh, don't have that kind of a background. So as we saw, the talk went on well till he came to the point of uh, resurrection. And there he stopped. Now, what was the result or the effect in uh, Athens? The last two verses here tell us that there were people who believed. What are their names? Dionysius, the Areopagite, a woman named Damaris and others with them. So there was a church that was established. Others with them. Remember, in every city, few people, generally they'll start. But then the church will grow. So thank God, there were believers. So we can safely say that the work was successful. Everyone didn't respond, but through that small group, God 
began to work and i think it's the same for us today usually it's a small set of people that may initially turn to the lord but that's a starting point from there it picks up and you have more people so uh, he completed his work in athens now he moved on to another city by the name of corinth so we will study about corinth in acts chapter 18 where is corinth corinth is um, about 55 miles uh, from athens uh, and in greece itself so you know all this is the macedonian region and this is the continuation of the second missionary journey okay so it's very much a part uh, of the same journey that he is making so if you all recall there is a region of achaia do you remember okay let me quickly show you the region of achaia that is where corinth is yes so you can probably see now we talked about athens here he's moving on to corinth all this is greece right the massive i mean this is modern day greece but then it's you till till here it's the macedonian region here we are talking about the achaean region all right so let's talk a little bit more about corinth what kind of a city was this corinth was again a populous city full of life thriving in those days uh it was a metropolis like today we have some centers of business and technology if you take india you know we would say like uh, delhi uh, mumbai prominent cities corinth was one such city it was a metropolis of those days it was a port city port city uh, generally made if if you were a port city then you were important why because people can enter yeah they can come into that uh, uh that that land through the port city so there was a lot of travel business which caused the city to thrive there were harbors in that city uh it was uh, uh, a commercial center and so it was booming it was also in those days known as the ornament of greece so you can imagine you know how well the city was doing back in those days itself it had a population of about 200000 people living in that city the other aspect about corinth is it was known as a sin city okay it was a sin city so this also helps us understand the different kinds of cities athens known as intellectual city you know intellectual cultural center he is coming now to a different city commercial a metropolis sin city why sin city we'll try and understand that but similar to other cities that were dedicated to gods and goddesses remember we said athens was dedicated to goddess athena this city was had a temple of the goddess Afro Aphrodite Aphrodite okay Aphrodite was the goddess of love and they had built up a temple on a very high uh, point you know 1750 square foot so a uh, uh, temple was established okay and in that temple there were 1000 male and female prostitutes so that was their way of worship they thought that prostitution is the worship to this goddess aphrodite no wonder it was called as the sin city and in that city the reputation was really bad it was known for immorality it was known for uh, you know Uh, a life of pleasure like people just lived their lives like that and now imagine paul has to go to such a city and minister 
it's really uh, nice to see that the team paul and team they were spiritually prepared to face any kind of city okay it's tough isn't it to come to a sin city and proclaim the gospel uh, but they were here and they were uh, ready to serve the lord now in the present present times uh, this city corinth the ancient corinth is known as a uh, corinthos with a k okay so in modern day greece there is a place like that uh, which probably is the same old corinthian city now in this city there are a couple of things that will take place there will be uh, a divine connection which god is going to make for paul in aquila and priscilla so he finds a set of teachers who come and join him these people were originally living in rome but at that point you know there was um, there was some decree that was passed and because of that they had to leave rome and they arrived at corinth so this decree was passed by emperor claudius uh, in ad 49 Okay, and so they were making their uh, temporary dwelling in uh, Corinth, and this is where you know they were able to meet with Paul and minister together with Paul. So now let's quickly go to the ministry here in Corinth and see the different things that are going to take place. So I've given us a summary. Now let's go on to what we have here in Acts chapter eighteen. so we understood paul departed 55 miles okay he came to corinth the sin city and here he met jews aquila and priscilla okay uh now why is a men- there a mention of their name because they are going to become the pro- some prominent team members with paul so once he came there verse 3 it says so because he was of the same trade which is tent making he stayed with them and worked for by occupation they were tent makers so that again is a connection so you see when we are doing ministry sometimes god connects us to godly people who can serve along with us these can be special connections do you remember in lystra he took timothy now here in corinth he's connecting with aquila and priscilla so they're all gathering together and he goes continues his work in corinth so which, which are the places where he preaches we are told the the synagogue he goes to the synagogue and again he's reasoning he's persuading both the jews and the greeks now at this point somebody joins paul who are they silas and timothy okay so now finally they have come they have joined with with paul and um, uh, paul is compelled in verse 5 it says he is compelled by the spirit and testified to the jews that jesus is the christ so the holy spirit will lead us through his promptings the life of paul why is it like it's a really good example because even in ministry when he's thinking okay what should i do next you know what, what where should i go how should i approach this the holy spirit is leading him you know go to macedonia provoked in the spirit compelled in the spirit so being sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit helps us in our ministry he keeps guiding us so here when he came he felt that okay you should preach to the jews and uh, do your work so he did that he went and proclaimed to the jews but the jews in corinth we are told that they were not willing to listen okay so what did paul say in verse 6 he says that you know i've done my part i'm preaching to you but you're not accepting it so i wash my hands i'm not going to worry about you now i just go and proclaim to the i will go to the gentiles when paul ministered in the synagogue though there was opposition by the jews there were certain gentiles as well as jews who responded 
so you know um uh, we have some names here names like justice crispus and uh, later on there are names such as gaius so this tells us that the ministry in corinth was also successful there is always opposition but there is also set of people who respond right now in corinth when there is opposition there's something interesting for us to note do we think that paul could have been a person who uh, feared or was anxious uh, when there is an opposition what do we think yeah so our guess is that no how can paul be anxious paul is this man of god he's so uh, bold you know full of passion but something very interesting verse 9 okay acts 18 the lord spoke to paul in the night by a vision and he said do not be afraid but speak and do not keep silent for i am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you for i have many people in this city and he continued there a year and 6 months teaching the word of god among them so we are told that god chose to encourage paul so who knows maybe you know though he is the strong man of god he needed encouragement from god and god is so faithful because every city there's opposition there's difficulty so god says okay you know what paul i know what you're going through i am with you okay so so uh, powerful even when you go back to the old testament uh, and and you see god's encouragement usually it's like i am with you so if god is with us god's presence is with us and if god is for us we can face anything and god also tells him that he is not alone in terms of the people there are other people here who are uh, my people so then what should paul do do not be afraid speak do not keep silent okay so so amazing god is um that uh, he knows right whatever we are going through so with this we will just stop here uh let's pray and close for uh, this morning and uh, if there are a- any comments from us we can discuss if not we can close in prayer is there anything in particular that encouraged your heart yes mike please just want to ask a doubt like in athens uh-huh. athens is there is no synagogue like where paul went because we did not get uh yeah there are no he uh, when it says verse 17 reasoned in the synagogue with the jews and with the gentile worshipers and in the marketplace so there is yeah. okay so let's uh, just wrap up then i want to request one of us from the online batch to go ahead and pray pastor can i pray pastor yes please uh, jacken we can hear you father god thank you lord father we commit all that we have learned lord god into your hands lord god father 
every word that you are teaching us lord god from the life of apostle paul and the early church lord god father we pray lord god whatever that we have learned father and whatever that you want us to do lord god that we will be moved by the spirit just like the early church just like apostle paul was moved by the spirit lord god prompted by the spirit lord god in spite of opposition father god they were able to stand for the gospel because they trusted in you master father help us oh god as your children lord god to believe in this one truth if god be with us lord god no one can oppose us oh god for the sake of gospel and whatever that calling that you have called each one of us to do lord god help us to be faithful lord god and whatever that you teach us lord god help us to follow that lord god father unless we rely on the spirit unless we be led by the spirit lord god we cannot do what you have called us to do father god give us the desire give us the willingness lord god to grow deep lord god into your word into your spirit lord god help each of us lord god as you've been teaching us lord god as you've been investing in our lives lord god to invest lord god for your kingdom lord god what you have called each each and every one of us thank you lord god thank you for each and every pastors lord god thank you lord god for the way that they've been investing in our lives lord god thank you father father we pray lord god that you will use each and every one of us for your glory in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you so much uh, jackin uh, thank you each one god bless you and have a really uh, wonderful week ahead we'll connect on friday in our next class thank you